I wonder how many people here uh, know Beaufort's and Beaufort's candle. Oh, pretty good. This is an older audience. I was. A, I, I assume that only people who know what a rotary phone looks like would actually know <laughs> what Beaufort's is. But I'll put a. I'll lay out a little bit of background to this uh, before uh, passing it on to Chitra. Um, <coughs> In, in 1985, I was a young reporter here, and I moved to Delhi when Rajiv Gandhi was elected prime minister. It was a time of great hope, great optimism. We had a young prime minister, um, you know, who had succeeded uh, his mother, uh, but we all saw that as a cynical age. And so there was a lot of optimism in the air, but it took probably just a couple of years, sometime in 87, when the Beaufort scandal broke. And before we knew it, all the optimism had you know, evaporated, and 87 and 88 were terrible years in terms of, uh, you know, diminishing uh, hopes and diminishing expectations. Uh, and I used to cover Lok Sabha uh, in Delhi, uh, and a lot of what transpired uh, happened because of some phenomenal work done by Chitra, who was at that time uh, in Geneva as a correspondent. Um, it's not as if there were no defense scandals before. You know, going back to 1960, there was something called the Jeep scandal. In 1977, there were rumors of, uh, you know, payoffs in the Jaguar uh, scandal when Jagjeevan Ram was a uh, 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 defense minister. But this was the first time that somebody actually did path-breaking work, not here, but in Europe, and actually found uh, both a paper trail and a money trail as it later transpired. I mean, looking back, 64 crores, which was uh, some mentioned those days, that sounds like chump change, you know, that's, that's the kind of money your corporator and Emily here <laughs> makes now. But those days it was big, and it broke like a thunderclap, and uh, a lot of credit went, uh, goes to Chitra for uh, some really phenomenal work which set the standards in investigative journalism here. Uh, how it all ended is another story which she, she's going to uh, talk about. But I want to start by asking Chitra, um, is, is there a parallel between Beaufort and Rafael, and how has the media covered Rafael? Is there a paper trail with Rafael? Is there money trail? And how much resources uh, are, is the media putting into uh, pursuing the Rafael investigation? Um, th thank you for that very nice introduction. Um, for me, the two deals are like chalk and cheese. A, because um, Beaufort is something that I lived for 10 years, and it, it needed to be constructed very carefully. The, the evidence had to be constructed. There was a paper trail. There were court cases in Switzerland, which uh, was the first time that India had, you know, the first time that Swiss laws were modified because of the Beaufort case. There were two cases that changed Swiss jurisprudence uh, on a assistance to foreign countries in criminal matters. So it, uh, it was very big in terms of getting the money, the papers, names of people, account numbers, details of transactions, don't tell this person, don't tell that person, diaries, handwritten notes. I mean, the, you name it, I mean, it was completely different from what we are seeing now. So, um, yeah. That, I hope, I don't know if that answers your consequences. So, my question is, ju just to segue into that, uh, it did not end very well in the sense that uh, I, uh, my recollection is that the Hindu did not back you fully towards the no, end. No, no. Um, so my question is, are Indian newspapers, is Indian media pressure proof? Uh, in the sense that even in, let's say in Rafael, there's a newspaper, a news outlet which follows this to its logical conclusion. Uh, are they immune from pressure or, you know, does the government still have, uh, you know, a hex on them? Well, you know, this is a, a heads, all media is open to pressure, especially if it's a family-owned media, and that's a huge problem in India, that you have families owning media companies, so there's absolutely no accountability. Yes, the Hindu did not back me in the middle of the story. The, uh, uh, the story was stopped and I was fired. But the, the interesting thing was that the story continued to, to unravel. You couldn't right. stop this anymore just because somebody in India didn't want. In fact, my, my source, Stan Lindstrom, told me that it had nothing to do with the Hindu. It had to do with my work. Right. So in some ways, he said, you, you are stuck with the story. Take mm -hmm. it or leave it. What was interesting was that at that point, um, 
the statesman and the Indian Express came in and published the stories. Right. But then they too, um, you know, it just became far too, it went from being an investigation mm -hmm. to just low level politicking. Right. And mm -hmm. then when the documents arrived in India 10 years later, right. 1997, mm -hmm. I mean, this is the first time you had box loads of documents. Right. Uh, and they are lost somewhere in the CBI. Yeah. I'm yeah. not even sure they are there anymore. Mm -hmm. So um, this is the level. And uh, to your question about, um, um, backing Indian uh, is Indian media backing the Rafal? I have no idea. Mm -hmm. um, in my view, uh, and this is again only my view, is that if you believe that there is something wrong, you just simply go after it and don't right. give up. Um, and you know, I mean, I have to thank my husband who's sitting there. I mean, he basically funded the entire investigation, including the court cases I had to fight in Switzerland. Right. And uh, no, I mean, nobody paid for my court cases, I, I was my own lawyer. So um, it was just because I believe, like you did, uh, and I remember we had this conversation that when Ra uh, Rajiv Gandhi was a, like our kind of person, mm -hmm. and you know, finally yeah. we had Mr. Clean, right. and that speech he made when Congress turned 100 in Bombay, Bombay, yeah, that I'm going the to power clean broker exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was as hopeful as you were, right. And then for me to um, you know to formally to finally realize, I mean, when I first heard the, saw the name Gandhi mm -hmm. on the document, I was shaking, right. And there's something else I want to also say that you know. My husband's contribution in this has to be, has to be. I would like to say thanks to a lot of people yeah, here, but especially, I think we give him a hand. especially yeah. him, yeah. Yeah. because um, you know he. Um, we met. We was. We met at Stanford when we were students, mm -hmm. and um, you know how it is. You talk at the you talk at the cafeteria, and then, what are you doing? What am I doing? So I asked him, "What are you doing?" So he said, "I'm trying to prove that one is greater than zero. Mm -hmm. So I said, "What an idiot! <laughs> I mean, who on earth would you know?" I mean, and he said, "Well, there's a mathematical equation." So I said, "Quickly finish. Let's get out of this. You know, <laughs> who keep Sometimes us? you have to prove the obvious. <laughs> and then. Um, during the Bofors thing, and you know, I had all kinds of politicians, all kinds of people telling me, uh, Rajiv Gandhi is in mm. Rajiv Gandhi is in But then Giancarlo was saying, where is the evidence? Right. You have to build it piece by piece. Mm -hmm. You can't just make a jump just because something is pushing you. Um, and I want to come back to the Hafal thing, that's what's happening. Unfortunately, right. it's going all over the place. Um, I have read what is publicly available uh, documentation, and I would recommend all of you to read. Uh, the most informed person on this is um, Abhijit Ayer Mitra, who is now in a jail right. in Odisha, and that's a shame uh, for our democracy. Um, uh, he has, I mean, he, you know, there has been. Um, to me, it's it's a it's a good deal. It's not a bad deal. Yes. Now. Uh, when you look at when you look at money, um, in the case of Bofors, uh, money had gone to politicians. Mm -hmm. Now there is no deal uh, on earth right. that is made without paying. And, and I was going to ask. I, I was going to come to that. Um, my question is: is uh, is all Arms Street corrupt? Yes. It, it seems to me that yes. there is not a single deal Arms deal in the well, world where there is not some kind of you know uh, corruption. Well, you know, pro quo. Uh, first, yes, you're right. You're right. I mean, there's nothing clean about an arms deal. But let's make the clear dis distinction between Bofors and Rafal. Mm -hmm. In the case of Bofors, the prime minister stood accused of right. personally getting involved. Right. It was not him. I mean, the, for the first time in the history of India. The prime minister stood accused. There was political payoff. Mm -hmm. You know, when you negotiate a deal over five, ten, these deals take a lot of time. Right. There is, you know, you have to make representations and you have to, you know, money goes back and forth. But uh, in Khafal, I'd, I have not seen the political monies. But that's because I have not put my mind to it. Right. But I think that somebody, if somebody has a good lead, they should follow and just follow it through right. and not let it fall off. Yeah. One of the things that uh, that's always surprised me, and it shouldn't anymore, I've been around long enough, uh, we have this impression of European countries as very, you know, clean and pristine, uh, and, and particul particularly uh, Nordic countries, Scandinavian countries, you know, you, you think, you know, you, you look at their annual corruption, whatever, the transparency, yeah, the national the corruption uh, index, and they all are top. But it turns out that they're pretty rotten too. I mean, well, let's let's begin with Sweden. Yeah. 
I mean, wafers in Sweden. Yeah. I mean, they were. Which was I mean, that was the, uh, the Sweden was like you couldn't be cleaner than Sweden. Um, but look how they, you know, the Swedish government, the Swedish Foreign Office, their arms control people, and our entire system collaborated to keep the the. And it was just because there were some good people who then said that this has to get out, and they were good human beings. Every system had good, has good human beings, right. and that's what I think keeps the systems going. I and mean, right. we may we can say this is bad, that is bad, but there will always be somebody who will one day stand up and say, and yes, to come back, I mean, Rafal, France is one of the most corrupt countries in the world. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. and mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it doesn't get worse. France, Italy, you name it, I can tell you. And to, to answer you, there is no deal without money. The money is changing hands. But did politicians make money? That's a question which, in my mind, should be answered in Rafal. Right. So, uh, I... I want to go, when we talk about the media and the, you know media's effort or lack of effort in pursuing big investigations, uh, I have a proposition. I have a theory here. Uh, it's very easy to blame the media, but big. In, I mean, it was fortunate that you were already in Geneva. Uh, I, I think, uh, and so I, it, the story fell into your lap, and you did phenomenal work. But there were very few uh, media which actually sent a reporter there. Uh, as I recollect, maybe one or two reporters went there. And that's because, you know, sh shoe leather reporting and reporting abroad is an expensive proposition. Uh, if, if, some, if some organization really wants to put its mind and heart into uh, the Rafael deal, they'll have to spend a lot of money. And in as much as uh, Indian media is, is fairly cash rich and i can tell you of newspapers which so are so can i so can i <laughs> cash rich we know who they are um, the, the fact is uh, they don't spend and the argument is uh, the, we can also argue that indian readers uh, are they they don't spend enough money on the media uh, what i mean is uh, everyone wants everything on the cheap uh, most people, I mean, our, our newspaper bill is hardly what, 200, 300 rupees I think uh, a month? People have stopped reading. And yeah. people have stopped, and everyone now wants st stuff for free because there's so much free stuff uh, on the internet, on Twitter, you know, there's, there's a lot of free media. And to me, this is a dangerous sign that when readers are not invested in the media, if you're not paying enough money, uh, news, the media can't spend enough money on big investigations like this. You, you, I, you know, I, I'm embarrassed. And, to and I want you to talk about your experience with news media. Uh, uh, yeah, new, yeah. New I, I, I was, I was emba I'm embarrassed to tell you that I was being paid a royal sum of maybe three hundred dollars by the Hindu. Wow. Uh, if that, I do. I'm not even sure I was being. The wow. initial trips to Stockholm were funded by, mm -hmm. by my husband. Wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we owe him a so lot. no, seriously. <laughs> and yeah. then. Um, and then one editor um, uh, came to see me, saying if I would work for the editor, I don't want to say him or her. Um, and then he ate, the, his food bill was more than what I was getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, seriously, you know, wow, I mean, wow. yeah, so they have a lot of money when it suits them. But when it comes to pursuing, and then by which time the government has got into the levers, and one reason why I think I succeeded, Chidran Chidu, is because I think I was not living in India. Right. There is so much gossip here. Mm -hmm. There's just so much. Everybody here is an expert on right. everything. Yeah. You know, you everybody knows everything about everything, yeah. and everybody has a view on everything. There is right. no putting your nose down. You know, the basics of journalism that you and I grew up on. Right. You know, follow two sources at least two independent sources per fact, you know, one fact, one fact per story, mm -hmm. all that's gone. Right. Today you just get on, twi on online and write some rubbish right. and it passes because, yeah. you know, you can correct it. Yeah. So uh, you're right. I mean, uh, if it's, it works both ways. I mean, if, if, if people want good, good um, value for, for journalism, they have mm -hmm. to invest in it. Exactly. So, so yeah, I, I want to take you into so the uh, the doc the Bofors documents came in ninety yes. seven. You said, and uh, for several years after it, the issue kept surfacing periodically, and yeah. it, it gradually fell off the map. Yes, Completely. it was made. No, it was made to fall off the map. Yeah. Nothing falls off the map in India. Right. So my my question is. Who's to blame? I mean, it's na it's it's natural that the establishment will want to you know wish it away, but at the end of the day, isn't it? the readership, the voters, the people, 
public memory. You, know, you remember public memory short? I think the blame is right here. But then nobody is uh, interested yes, in this I, anymore. No, I agree. I agree. Hmm? No, I mean I. Um, okay, let's look at it. I'll be provocative now. Mm -hmm. What I mean, the entire VP Singh government and the NDA mm -hmm. rode on this mm -hmm. corruption thing that we shall, you know, will will. Um, take it out in 15 days, 20 days, everybody will go to jail. Um, that was in uh, 1981 or 1991. Mm -hmm. What is preventing this government from going after? Right. I mean, you all come to power saying that you'll clean up, and then you get become just like the other person. And that's because we're all like that. We right. all, you know, we all of us in India, in one part or the other, have have dealt with corruption and, and closed our eyes to it. Right. Um, uh, I don't think there's a moral, we can't moralize about each other here, yeah. but I think newspapers have to be very careful because they, uh, it's, they have a role mm -hmm. to play as a fourth estate. And I think if, they do, if they're not going to be careful, you have now the social media today, you'll get slammed out of your senses. And I think social media, it has a lot of down, downsides, bad mm -hmm. sides, mm -hmm. but it's come as a watchdog. You know, it it does, and I again want you to talk about News Minute because my argument is that even so, a, lo a lot of these new websites, whether it's News Minute or Scroll or the peop the expectations from people is that they'll read it for free. Yeah, and eventually this will this model will collapse when you want something for free. And I keep arguing this all the time, both here and in the U.S. If you want something for free, you will not get authentic, genuine uh, information which costs money. To unearth, to you know, to uh, sort of it takes confirm. Time. It takes time. It takes effort. It takes money. It takes resources. So unless you're willing to buy a product, and my fear is that there's too much expectation, too much expectation of freebies now, and I find our media incredibly cheap in the sense that it's very it, newspapers are pennies to the uh, you know uh, what it costs here. You know, 100, 200 rupees a month is nothing. You know, it's one hundredth of income that people spend. Uh, you you go any other country the newspapers cost one dollar two dollar four dollars you know for a day's newspaper so I'm just concerned that this hunt for free information is leading to uh, shoddy information incomplete information and the public is not uh, invested sufficiently uh, in this and at the end of the day whether it's Bofors or fail or any other it's your money. I think people often it's forget. Tax, it, taxpayers it's money. taxpayer money. Yeah, and absolutely. I find there's not enough. The people are interested in headlines for a few days and then it falls off the map. And to me, Bofors was a classic case. Well, I, I, um, I am an eternal optimist. I don't give up easily, which is why I stayed in the Bofors case for 10 years. I mean, I had one, I had a baby, I had two little babies through it. Um, wow. Yeah, and somebody who helped me th is also here. So I, uh, I, I, um, I don't give up. You know, um, and I I don't believe in giving up. So maybe I still hope something will happen, because you know the documents were there. Look at the CBI. Now right. it's raiding itself. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean. Oh, when I read that headline, I said this is not this is not happening. You know, it's actually the CBI is raiding itself. Yeah. Uh, what is? I mean, where mm -hmm. have we come to? Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think every political party has played an active role in destroying the institutions of this country, including the media. Right. And but I think there's going to be there's going to be thank you there's going to be a swing back because mm. I think people are not stupid. Right. And uh, just the session before us, they were talking about how you need to ask your local um, right. MP mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. MLA mm -hmm. or something to be accountable for, or you know make them feel that they're not got elected just because right. uh, they are, they are they're superior, but they owe it to us. Right. I think that is happening. Yeah. I so see that. Yeah, I, I agree totally. And like I'm saying again, that the pressure eventually has to come from the readership, from the voters, from ground up. So I think with that, we'll just throw it open. And since I've blamed you people for not being passionate enough, show us some passion. Come on. Good. Questions, please. About the Khafal? The Khafal, as far... Yeah, on the Khafal issue, there is a, uh, the question of... Uh, can you see me? Yeah. Um, there is an issue. Uh, I, think the, I think for me, the most important thing is that the... The aircrafts are the world's best. They're the best planes. Now, uh, as was the before done, by the way. I That's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. But can I finish? Yeah. 
Yeah. Why, 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 why don't you wait for the mic and uh, when, yeah, the when you have a chance finish? to ask your question? I'm not used to being shouted. Yeah. Let me finish. Is there a scam in it? I think that there, is in, there are questions in my mind, especially as to, uh, uh, you know, there is a question about the uh, Ambani connection and them getting uh, uh, a, a contract, uh, never having built an aircraft. But they are one of, you know, m uh, many partners. There are questions about it. But to me, um, which is why uh, investing in an investigation has to happen. And that's not going to come from the government. Simply because in the government, it's like it, for me, it's like all scorpions stuck in a bottle. Nobody wants to get out because the others will sting them. So that kind of investigation has to be done by a media house, follow the leads, and see if at the end of the day, if there was money involved with, and it was illegally done. Without that, you know, one, uh, it doesn't matter what I think. I think what is more important is what the evidence shows. Absolutely. Madam is saying we should follow the money trail. Absolutely. And trust me, there will always be a money trail. Because uh, you see, these criminals are uh, um, arms dealers and criminals, they spy on each other. Okay? And I mean, I was once told by somebody that he, some, another arms dealer has oak toilet seats. I mean, <laughs> if, you, if you know what is the other person's if you, you know, this is a small group, they all know what's going on. So it would have taken the, the second one, I think it was the Eurostar, to come out and say this is what happened, this is what happened. Why are they not doing that? Which is why to me, that is where the investigation should go. What happened that in the last minute it swung or didn't swing? These questions must be followed by journalists. Uh, there needs to be media, invest media to be invested in it. And let's, let's get to the truth. I mean, there's no point in saying who is not corrupt. I'm sure many people, I don't think, I don't believe anybody here is corrupt. I'm not corrupt. So, you know, we cannot just say, hum sab nange hai is hamame. All that is rubbish. You know, we are not Nanga. I'm not Nanga. Neither is anybody here. You know? So, I hope I've answered your question, ma'am. <coughs> yeah, no, you need, you need to give others a chance, ma'am. Ma'am, ma'am, please let uh, people with the mic ask questions, please. You made a comment that you didn't think that politicians were involved in the Rafael deal. I'm, then the reason I'm bringing that up is um, I'm no admirer of Mr. Modi. But I don't think he or Mr. Parikar, who was the then defense minister, were directly involved in terms of having their pockets lined. But to make that blanket statement that politicians were not involved seems going a little too far in the sense that, uh, excuse me, that well, she did say that. I, I'm not saying that. I didn't say that. Okay. But um, as I said before, I don't think either of them were directly involved in the thing. But um, don't you think that it is worth pursuing the possibility that even if politicians were not directly involved, that there could have been influence? I mean, I'm making a presumption that I think that Mr. Modi in his early days was so arrogant that he thought he could get away with anything and someone took advantage of that. Um, so your question, sir? Yeah. So I'm just asking you if you think it's worth pursuing the possibility that influence can be made in other ways other than directly lining a politician's pocket. Absolutely. And I didn't not, I didn't make, I didn't make the point that, um, I made the point that in Beaufort, the politician was involved, of which there was evidence. I did not say that in the Rafale deal there was no political influence. I don't know, which is why I think it's worth pursuing. That the point that Chidu made earlier, that you have to invest. It takes time, it takes money, it takes energy, it takes passion, it takes commitment. I was doing this because I thought I was going to save India and I was going to catch robbers. I was 29 and pregnant, and, my son, and I was going to catch these robbers, and we were going to put them in jail, and they would rot there for the rest of their lives. That's how stupid I was. And I continue to be, I continue to cultivate a certain naivety, because I think when the journalist doesn't do that and becomes cynical, then you become just a, you know, you become a, uh, you become what? You become a dalal. I'm not a dalal. I mean, journalists have to continue to question. That is what is expected of them. Uh, I have 
Uh, yes, excuse me. Uh, yeah, here. Uh, I also agree with this gentleman that I thought in the beginning you said that you didn't expect this to be a political corruption or politicians' corruption. Later on, you did say it could be. The question is this, that corruption or maybe a statement perhaps a little bit, corruption is not just financial corruption. Okay. It is it is intellectual, political corruption. And that we see in a, in a government which is more a political power, political system, rather than a constitutional governance that we have given to ourselves 70 years ago. And I mentioned this with one question. I don't know why the press in India, the press in, the, I'm an old timer, the media in, in India did not even raise its, uh, raise, an eye, raise its eyebrow, let us say, in questioning the changes in the political funding laws by which you do not even know whether any of that money has come back into India Absolutely. for a political party. I and agree. That, yeah, that's, I mean, that's I, something and I nobody agree with has you. looked at. Absolutely, I agree with you, sir. And I, I, I mean, I, I don't believe that anybody in Delhi is innocent. I'm pretty sure yeah. all, it's a group. I mean, I call them G37. I mean, you know, they're all, they all know each other and it's the same people who go to the same parties and they, they all know what's going on. But then that means that we let them do it. I mean, we should, we in the media yes. should stand up and say, hello, it's our money. And the, the other, there's another issue that's not come up. It's our defense. It's our national defense. Yes. You know, we, we, we live in a very volatile zone. Uh, you know, we've lost prime ministers in the region. We have, we have nuclear power surrounding us. I remember when India went nuclear uh, uh, in the late 90s. Someone, 90, yeah, some, yeah, someone told me, oh, you know, uh, a British guy, oh, a British fellow, anyway, he told me, why do, why do you need, uh, why does India need uh, nuclear bombs? Uh, I said, hey, we have, we have a nuclear neighbor who's, who's completely nuclearized, and I told him, why do you guys need one? You're under the NATO umbrella. You know, there's, France is a nuclear power, UK is a nuclear power, so we need people who stand up and tell our politicians to get their act together. And that's it. I mean, I, you know, it's your job and my job. So as a very senior and respected journalist, would you be able to say today with any certainty or, or courage of conviction that the media would be able to look at the Indian scenario today? I, Rafael is one aspect of it. Let's but, take Rafael. Let's take the political funding aspect of it. Is that anyone working at it or will there be sort but of sir, picked I just, up and... Yeah, I just told you that I am an eternal optimist. I don't give up. Well, I hope... I mean, I, I won't give up. So, yes, tomorrow if we get a journalist who comes and says, here's the evidence, we should look at it.